With me here in the studio today is the head writer of the blog Crafts for Assholes, Honey Clark. I was going to go with Managing Editor, but I figure I'll save that for somebody else. Ooh, that's a fancy title. We watched Agadu? Agadu, yes. Agadu. Which is, I believe, Telugu for He Does Not Stop. He certainly doesn't. Starring uh, Superstar. Mahesh Babu. It said that is at the start of the film. Well, it said Superstar Mahesh. He had a really fancy logo with shooting letters instead of shooting stars. It was perfect. Yes, the, the, the letters of the word Superstar flew down and the word Mahesh burst out of the earth. I'm genuinely surprised we don't have credits like this in the States. Well, it, we should. If it's just you know the next George Clooney movie, he he's just credited as international superstar George Clooney. <laughs> Nobody would put up with that shit in this country. Why would no we? one? I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger at the height of his career could not get away with that shit. He he was not credited. Justin at, Bieber could. In what? Not gonna happen. Can you briefly in a nice little summary sum up what the film was about for me? Mahesh Babu is a really good cop. He finds out that these guys he's already been hassling um, arrange matters so his brother had almost no choice but to commit suicide. So he sets out to destroy these men. And the action scenes are hilarious. We're going to run through this point by point from the start. Okay, first we start out with a string of robberies. There are all sorts of robberies going on in one part of town. The police are concerned. So they're doing what, you know, you do about that situation, standing around in the police station and talking about it. As one does. Now, of course, at the same time, a young boy carrying a bag runs right into the goddamn police station with a bunch of rough-looking dudes running up behind him. And And the little boy shouts, arrest them! So the cops do, because that's what you do when a little boy runs in and tells you what to do. Well, they are, as it turns out, the thieves they were looking for. The boys set them up, dragged them right to the police station, and the head police officer, CI, I guess that's... CI, Chief Inspector, I guess. Chief Inspector says, you know what? Okay, you're like a cop now, basically. And you're also my son now, because that was fucking awesome. (laughs) Well, he has a point there. So, sure enough, he becomes the guy's son. He's got his slightly older stepbrother. They're all happy. He's a little overly obsessed with his new father to the point where he literally worships him as a god. I found that somewhat disturbing. So, as often happens, his older stepbrother accidentally kills a young man, pushes him right off a wall to his death. Our hero, what was his name, Shankar? Shankar. Our hero Shankar takes the fall for it because he doesn't want his god to suffer the indignity of his uh, natural born son being uh, labeled as a killer. So, uh, young Shankar does very well uh, in reform school. Reform school and uses that as a jumping off point to become a police officer. Well, you know, that would explain the rest of the police they show us. Yes, it would would. Now, he's the kind of police officer who, like, throws people into things, which then explode in slow motion. Oh, that's my favorite part. He does that so much. I he love does that. that so much. I wish they'd do that in our action movies, because our action movies, you can't see anything that happens in the fight scenes. There's no point in watching them. Meanwhile, in India, they just throw people into shit, and the shit explodes, and it's cool. Yes, yes it is. So we're introduced to the adult Shankar as he's doing exactly that to the point where, okay, he came there specifically to kill one guy. He beats up everyone the dude knows first, then chases him down and jumps between two moving train cars while shooting him. (laughs) I love any action movies. Then we get the, the first musical number where he's dancing in front of a bunch of dudes covered in dirt, and he shoots, like, five people in the course of the musical number. In really cool ways. My favorite is when he skids his jeep, like, over a dude who's running away, and then shoots him on the ground without getting out of the jeep. He could have squished him with the jeep, but I'm guessing he didn't want to clean up the tires. 
I think he just really likes shooting people. Okay, yeah, I noticed that. So obviously when a small town has trouble with a gangster who's like killing witnesses, he really wants to get a nuclear power plant going, so he'll kill anybody his way. They are having trouble. Who do they call in? The guy who just loves shooting people, Encounter Shankar. Now, for you listening out there, in India, an encounter is when the police get so tired of somebody that they just officially put out an order to murder him on sight. We don't have that in the States. We don't need that in the States. I don't think anybody... Well, maybe they need it over there. It is... They do have problems, but Jesus wept. That is some... That's some fucked up shit right there. That is that is police sanctioned wet work right there that Yeah, it doesn't sit well with me, but I'm an American and what the fuck do I know? Yeah, it's some dark shit right there. So encounter Shankar, who has committed officially sanctioned murder so much that it's his nickname, comes to town to straighten everybody out. Boy howdy. Starting with the cops, we first see sitting around one guy's doing somebody's ironing. The guy in charge is sitting on the floor playing poker and extorting food from some poor merchant. And there's some guy who's made a kitchen in there. And then Mahesh Babu walks in. Now, the the most corrupt officer there already recognizes him, so he knows to play it straight. The chef, on the other hand... <laughs> the chef, on the other hand... Um, is proud of his connection to the villain of the piece. I don't remember his name, honestly. I don't either. It was something short. Let's call him Larry. I thought it was Dino. Dino? Yeah. I know his his buddy was Darga or some shit. I should look it up on the IMDb. Anyway, so this guy (laughs) brags about knowing Larry. And our friend Mahesh, well, he does this thing a lot in this film. It's his gimmick. His gimmick is that he will be amazed at the sight of a man and say, You look exactly like my best friend or my brother who died. And then he'll describe the plot of an Indian film. None of these people have ever seen these films, apparently. Yeah, yeah, they have the bad luck of not going to the movies very much. Especially Larry. Yeah, Larry hasn't seen any of these fucking movies. Larry never leaves the house, I think. Well, he's busy being a gangster. Yeah. Mahesh uses this newfound connection with uh, the guy to uh, get in good with him and then just basically find more gangsters to beat the shit out of. So then another gangster will come in and be like, ha ha, come on, you can't handle this? I'm going to handle this. And next thing you know, he's Mahesh's best friend. Then next thing you know, everybody's getting arrested and just beaten savagely with sticks in the police station. And the thing is... You're watching this horrible shit, and you're laughing just like the guy who had it happen to him last. Well, really, that's pretty horrific torture. Yeah, each guy who has this happen to him, after it's done and the ne- it's the next guy's turn, is like, yeah, pretty much fuck this guy. This is hilarious. To the point where there's three of them throughout the whole film who become, uh, what was his name again? Shankar. They become- Shankar's cheering section. They are his fan club. Yes. To the point where they start taking selfies with his next victim. Yeah, it's it's kind of adorable, to be honest with you. It really is. It doesn't make any sense, but it's cute as hell. So, through all this, Shankar manages to shut down Larry's liquor business, and uh, also, what else? Gambling? Gambling. His gambling house is next, and basically all of his illegal businesses, so that all's left is this power plant he wants to get built. So he just immediately gets that whole project shut down too. And then, then he walks in and becomes his best friend. The Uh, guy who sent him into town, and the guy who uh, was in charge of approving the nuclear power plant, are hanging around this guy's house like they're best pals. Yes, that is true. Shankar looks at them and goes, these guys are corrupt too? I am screwed. But he's not, because he's, um, what's that word? He does not stop. No, the word that his nickname is. He's... Well, he's Encounter Shankar. Right. So, nothing's gonna stop him, because that's what the name of the movie means. 
he comes in he's like i'm corrupt too i just want power and money like all of you guys so yeah let's do this i'll you know get all the restrictions taken off your project and we're going to be best buddies in the meantime <laughs> he finds out about the money man behind it all do you want to address the girlfriend problem an hour later Oh, well, let's bring in Brahmanandam first. Brahmanandam is a very popular comedic actor in uh, Telugu films. Uh, he's in pretty much all of Mahesh Babu's films. Sorry, superstar Mahesh, all of his films. Well, uh, he's in this one too. And at first, I thought it was some sort of stunt casting thing because they set him up like he's the guy that the main villain is afraid of. But no, he's just the money guy. He's the comic, you know, comedic uh, guy that Shankar basically just torments him for the rest of the film. Which I enjoyed because that guy's comic stylings are not my personal cup of tea. True. True. At least they did not dress him up in drag in this movie. To be fair, the last time I saw him have to go through that was way back, way, way back in a Chiranjeevi film. Uh, for you at home, Chiranjeevi was the biggest Telugu star in India back in the early 90s. That was a pretty good movie, except for that particular subplot. The film she is referencing right now is Aluda Majaka, which I highly fucking recommend you track down and watch. Opening horse chase scene. Anyway, back to the film. Yeah. <laughs> what we have neglected to mention over this whole time is the romance subplot. You see, every Indian action film is also a romantic comedy. It's also a musical. We'll get into that. Yes, we will. Uh, not every number. We don't remember them all. Heck no, there were a lot. Anyway, our young hero spots across the street one day a beautiful woman handing out sweets to children. And he's like, you know, I'm about the age to get married right now, so... And yeah. she seems like a nice lady. Why not her? Yes, it's, it's going to be her, because I have made that decision right now. Um, and then he sees her turning down a marriage proposal from a doctor. She also said that if she heard police or postal worker again, she was going to throw up in mind barfing. Yes, so clearly <laughs> this is a challenge for our hero Shankar, so he finds a researcher who is also a lawyer finds out everything he can find out about this woman which is that she is a really really immoral businesswoman who was uh not so much handing out candy to children as selling candy to children well she was bribing them to get their parents to buy it indirectly selling let's say her company has a string of incredibly dishonest commercials claiming that their candy cures obesity and impotence and makes you a better athlete. And makes you smarter in school. Yes, so Shankar decides, okay, this is my end. She's a terrible person. I'll use that against her to get her to marry me. Because we all want to marry horrible people who have absolutely no conscience. I mean, isn't that your dream? Well, of course it is, but you have to understand Shankar is, let's face it, a psychopath. <laughs> you can't deny it, can you? I want to. He's a really cool action hero, but you're right, being a really cool action hero does not exactly... It does not exonerate one from the title of psychopath. I suppose not. So, this is our romantic subplot where he charges in in the middle of her getting engaged stops the engagement, and accuses her of murder. He does manage to convince her to beat the shit out of her would-be fiancé, his parents, and the researcher who he brought along. And the priest who was going to officiate the marriage. Oh yes, yes, she beat the priest also. She only did the real serious crotch damage to her would-be fiancé, though. She did not, however beat Shankar, and this shit was all his fault. So you kinda knew... To be fair, though, she could probably tell, even if she hadn't fallen in love, that he was not the dude to knee in the balls and slap around. This is true. He's a dangerous man, and there's no good way to be a dangerous man. So anyway, Shankar uses the amusing subterfuge of murder charges to uh, get her to meet him in the park, hang out a little, meet the family... They have musical numbers where they declare their love for each other while dancing with clones of themselves. And uh, actually, that musical number starts with one of my favorite subtitled lines in all of cinema. The words, 
Hello, you are making me get blown in your thoughts. I can't tell you what the rest of the song actually said, because I kept giggling again. Yeah, it was tough to follow a little bit. The clones didn't help much, but yes, you are making me get blown in your thoughts. I don't want to know what it yeah, actually meant. Yeah, it couldn't I have like been this, that good. I like this version better. Back to the subject. Back to the actual goddamn story, because you know where the love story's going. They're going to fall in love. They're going to get married. They're going to sing more. Back in the story, uh, our friend Shankar is using the money man, Brahmanandam, to murder all of Larry's friends, one by one. The reason for this, as he explains to his first victim... He doesn't murder them. He gets Larry to murder them. That is true. That is true. He convinces Larry that each one of these people are enemies who need to be killed. And he does this uh, through this little portly dude. But as he explains to the first guy, he's doing this because right around the start of the movie, he found out that his beloved older brother, who he went to reform school for, was murdered at the start of this movie. We did not know that it was... Shankar's brother. Shankar's brother, who was basically pressured into suicide by these gangsters. Shankar is angry, and he is just, just basically causing as much death as possible because of this. He likes to tell people why they're dying right before the other guy kills them. It's nice. My favorite is... The last one? Yes. This is a great scene because he tells the guy right in front of Larry, and Larry does not react except to shoot the guy that Shankar set up and then take earplugs out of his ears and tell Shankar, you know, you're right. If I could have heard him pleading, I wouldn't have been able to kill him. Thank you very much for that. (laughs) Oh, yeah, we did leave out how, at some point in the story, uh, his adopted dad just shows up to say, Okay, your brother told me that he was the one who murdered that kid when you were little. This is how he finds out how his brother died. So now he finds out all the depressing shit about what they were put through. But the important thing, that this this is when he reunites with his father, who loves him again now that he knows that he didn't make a terrible mistake when he was young because you know all dads should have been in their children when they accidentally murder somebody well you know he he couldn't know for sure that it was an accident i'm just saying that was a fucked up thing to do true true but to be fair he hadn't really been his son for very long (laughs) it's true he adopts the kid and then like a week later the kid murders somebody okay yeah i can see how you might be a tad pissed off about that it was probably suspicious already since the kid was like literally worshipping him as a god. He tells his two sons, uh, who are going to school, to go and pray to God before they go. And the one kid runs upstairs to go to the little shrine. The other kid bends down and touches the guy's foot. Because, and he says it, you are my god. I would be looking for a way to get rid of that kid really fast. <laughs> Yes, that, that that's... I met you so recently. You haven't aged a day or anything, and apparently you worship me as a god. I am going to get rid of you before you, like, sacrifice a goat to me on the dark altar of Satan. I'm just saying, it's, it's possible. <laughs> Shankar's fucking psychotic. Well... We should probably mention how fucking meta this film is. It's so meta. Remember the thing at the intermission? Oh yeah, this is great. Every every big Indian blockbuster film has an intermission in the middle because they're usually really long. That's so the audience can get up and go to the bathroom. Right after uh, our hero Shankar does some awesome shit at a construction site. He kicks the crap out of like 16 guys. It's great. People are flying through things. Really fun to watch. He turns away from the villain and starts walking and says that he has to go to the bathroom He kicks a bucket. He kicks a little bucket at the screen. Everything freezes and it says intermission. (laughs) The hero just said he's going to go take a pee during the intermission of his own movie. It's not just that, but then with the first three guys he tricks, he tricks them with plots of movies, including one of his own films directed by the director of this film, Dooku Doo. It's not great, but it's watchable. Yeah, this is really meta- Meta as fuck to the point 
where we get to the end of the movie and he tells us it's the end of the movie and the credits roll. Well, he did say end of story at one other point, so I kind of expect well, that to come back. At that point, he said the end, and and at the end, he says end of story. Okay, roll good credits. Point. <laughs> There's some foreshadowing, but it's great. After all of this has gone down, right? A uh, little Brahmanandam, the comedic actor who has been slapped around, tricked into having people murdered left and right, terrified for his life right now, finds out that the lawyer, the researcher, was the one who basically set him up. He takes some thugs, goes to the guy's office, and just beats the shit out of him and trashes the office, beats up all his people. And then confesses he's had a bunch of people killed. Yes, explains the whole thing angrily at the man. Now, this was a bad idea because our uh, lawyer, researcher, calls Larry on the phone and explains the whole thing, except for Shankar's involvement, because Shankar has been pretty good to him so far. So, Brahmanandam, sorry, don't remember the character's name, but I do know the actor's name, is screwed. He gets called out to, you know, what was it? It was a construction site or something. A construction site. It looked like it was it was in the woods or yeah, something. Yeah, it did. Like a cabin? I don't know. Point is, there's there's big piles of wood everywhere. This is important later. So he's about to get killed, but Larry offers him a chance. Since he made everybody dance, if he dances well enough, maybe he'll be allowed to live. So we get an extended dance sequence from Ramanandam. I can't help Multiple think. costume changes. Multiple costume changes, all kinds of references to films, most of which I did not pick up the reference. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some digital manipulation in there someplace. Yeah, he was dancing pretty spryly for an old dude. Yeah, quite a little bit. Anyway, he dances to the point where he just passes the fuck out right there. And Larry's like, wait, no, you can't just die like this. I had so many plans for how to kill you. And then Shankar shows up. Enter Shankar to explain... Once again, the plot of the movie. <laughs> runs through the whole thing. I was the one responsible for tricking into killing all of your friends and your brother. It was all because you were pretty much directly responsible for my brother's death and the death of his wife so now i'm going to murder you like a motherfucker and you know larry sends his fucking thugs after shankar and shankar disposes of them like it's in nothing. really entertaining ways it's great he flips one dude upside down and stomps on his fucking neck throws people into things it's fantastic it really is Best of the best, though, is when he gets to Larry. Holy shit. <laughs> well, we told you it was pissed. He drags Larry out in public and reenacts a scene from earlier in the film when Larry dragged one of his enemies out into public and said that if one of these people here has the guts to stand up for you, I won't kill you. Knowing, of course, that everybody's terrified of Larry. Well, what Shankar does is drags Larry out in front of everybody and says, Hey, if one of these people gives a shit about you, I'll spare your life. Otherwise, I have this official order to end you. So Larry gets on his knees in front of these three little girls. And, and he's like, I will give you like all the candy in the world if you just raise your hand. And the littlest girl goes, If I want candy, my daddy will buy it for me. So instead of everybody being too afraid of Larry to stand up for the innocent man, everybody's just too sick of Larry to I'm stop. tired of your shit. I want to watch you get murdered. Exactly. And, oh God. So the three guys who have been Shankar's cheering section show up. And Larry's like, oh, thank God. It's my men. I'm saved. I have three people who will stand up for me. And they're like, no, no, we're just here to see you get murdered. This is awesome. <laughs> We've been having so much fun watching this movie that we're in. <laughs> so meta. So Larry gets the best death of all. I believe he gets, what, kicked, shot, and flies through a window? Am I correct about that? He's kicked into the air, shot like three times while he's in the air, and he lands with his ass through an SUV windshield. It's brilliant. Yeah, glass flying everywhere. It is a fantastic, fantastic ending. So then, obviously, Shankar says, Okay, the movie's over. Go home, everybody.